Hey, it's Aurelius, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to run through five interesting websites and tools that I recently came across that I think you'll find value in. So let's run through them. All right, so the first website that you'll find a resource for is from Playtex, and they're offering over 100 book summaries on business science and productivity. Playtex is originally an articles into audiobooks or speech tool, but you can access this specific page in the description box below, as well as the rest of the tools and websites I'll be mentioning in this video. To give you an example of some of its summaries, these include the Lean Startup, we've got the Alchemist, so quite a number of popular titles that you might have heard of or you haven't read. So it's good just to take a look. You can read these summaries, it's in text version, as well as a little player right here where you can play it. It's two minutes 45 at least for this book called Extreme Productivity. And you can also, increase or decrease the speed of the summary in audio form. The summary will include a description of what this book is about, as well as key principles and takeaways from the book. Let's scroll down and take a look at a few more titles so that you can get a glimpse as to what Playtex summaries provide. We've got Effortless, Connect, The Practice by Seth Godin. We've got Focus. Uh, the Art of Impossible, Headstrong, The Secret, Emotional Intelligence. So let's click on that. And again, you can see a summary of this as well as being able to play it right there. And the best part is you're able to access all these book summaries without having to opt in or sign up to anything. Moving on to the next useful website and this one's called Domains GPT. And if you're looking for that next brand name, or if you're starting a company or a business, this is a very useful website where you can search for a potential domain name to register for. When you go to their website, you can choose what type of name you're looking for. Are you looking for a brandable name such as Google, Rolex, Ikea, Nike, Quora, or something random? You've got two word combinations such as Facebook, YouTube, Open Door, Portmanteau, things such as Pinterest, Instagram, FedEx, where they're combining kind of two different words and meanings. Alternative spellings, including Lyft, Five and Dribble, and non-English names. So let's start with something like a brandable name just to share with you. Next, it's going to prompt you, what are you building? So I've put in an AI powered personal finance app to help everyday people manage and track their income and expenses. So type in your description or your business, of course. And once you've done that, we're going to move on to the next step. Here we've got extra settings such as your domain name length, you want a minimum to a maximum and word inclusions as well as top level, or you can choose one of these other domain extensions. But let's try to go for a .com first. We'll stick with the name length range and go next. Now it's generating, let's see what we've got. All right, just my luck, zero available domains, but let's go ahead and edit our settings. Let's choose a .ai and see if anything comes up based on that search. All right, this time it's found 10 available domains and here are a few, including what it could look like as a logo, but we've got Money Power, Cashwise, Income Max, Financio, Budget Bot, and some of these other ones. You may or may not like any of these names and that's okay. Perhaps you could use some of these as inspiration for your own names. But if you do like any of them, you could always go and click and that'll take you to the domain registrar where you can register right away. And as you can see, wealthway.ai is available. Side note, do do your due diligence ensuring that the name that you wanna register for isn't trademarked. That's just something to keep in mind. If you haven't found the name that you're looking for, you can always go back and choose one of the other options for the types of names. Next up, do you wanna learn how to draw and doodle on your screen, like the following example, where let's say I'm demonstrating how to use Domains GPT and I want your attention to go on a particular area of the screen. Well, check this out. I can simply point like so and to in something like this. And I wanna point on different things on the screen you can see, and I can also use different shapes like a circle. I can also put in uh, regular text, so this is some text. 
Well, there's a tool for Mac called ScreenBrush, and yes, unfortunately, it's only for Mac at the time of this recording. However, I did find an alternative called Epic Pen, which you can also use. It's free, which you can use for its pen, eraser, and highlighter tools. But the one I specifically and personally use for my screen tutorials is ScreenBrush. If you take a look right here, this is the screen brush toolbar. And when this pops up, you can choose from different options like a line tool, or you can go with a quick arrow or a straight arrow. So it looks like this, as opposed to a kind of doodle looking arrow like this. Uh, there's also shapes as well, rectangle. We can also do circles as you saw. Different size as well of your tool thickness as well as being able to simply use its rainbow colors. So anytime I doodle on screen, it will just use some random rainbow colors. You can see right here, or you can choose a specific color from the palette. In addition, there's this freeze fade mode where let's say I want to disappear. We're gonna doodle right here. It's gonna disappear like so, or you can make it fixed until you make the toolbar disappear, which in my case, I've used the shortcut option tab on my keyboard and that disappears. So whenever I wanna present something, I simply press option tab and then the toolbar appears, which then I can use the screen brush tool. Now, if you go to more options, there are shortcuts and you can customize this in any way you want with different tools and shortcuts for specific uh, keys on your keyboard. There's a heap of options to choose from. And in terms of pricing with ScreenBrush, it is a paid tool for Mac. I can't recall how much, I think it was about 10 bucks or 20 bucks at most for this. But if you are looking for a free alternative, once again, take a look at Epic Pen and that should give you the essentials for basically doodling and drawing on your screen. Moving on, we've got an AI writing tool. This one is called Lex. If you simply go to lex.page, you'll land here where you can sign up for free. And just like any Word document or a Google Doc, very similar, you can see in terms of its layout, we've got basic toolbars here, but the addition is there's AI built into it. So for instance, let's say you start writing about artificial intelligence, uh, which says here in this demo, artificial intelligence has revolutionized the way we live and work in our day-to-day -day life. But let's say you get stuck, you don't know what to write next. You can always use the command K uh, keyboard shortcut keys, at least on the Mac. So I'll press that. And the AI continue writing option is what you want in this instance. So we'll go continue writing and then it will automatically write for you, giving you a suggested sentence or paragraph that you could use. I like Lex because it's got this focus mode. There's no distractions. There's no 1001 features and tools on the side or at the top. You have the bare essentials. Another useful feature is this show AI written text and you can see what was written by AI versus what you wrote originally. And just going through the commands once again, you've got chat about your document where you can chat with the uh, Lex AI bot and you can ask any question. Other options include generate text from prompt, get feedback on your writing, insert a random word and some formatting options as you can see right here. So Lex is a great alternative to Google Docs and Word. Give it a try, let me know what you think. All right, and finally, this one's from Canva and Canva's got a thing called Magic and this is their suite of AI tools. Specifically what I like is its Magic presentation. So what you can do is generate presentations using the power of AI. So you don't need to really come up with a presentation. You can use its Magic presentations to give you that foundation to start with. So what you do is you go into your Canva account, create a design, search for presentation. We're gonna go with a 16-9 ratio. And right here, we're starting from scratch and what we can do is click on the little Magic or Canva Assistant icon and you'll see here, Magic Design, draft a presentation with AI. You'll get this prompt window, this field where you can describe what you want your presentation to be about. In this example, I'm going to put top five things to do in Sydney, Australia, which is where I am from, and I'll hit enter. Now it's creating the presentation. And voila, here's what it produced, the top five must-dos in Sydney, Australia, as well as a preview of some of the 
tips and the things to actually do in Sydney. So we've got a preview of one example of the template. We've got this one too. So it looks pretty clean and pretty nice. And based on this, you know, let's go with, I kind of like this one here. All right, let's go and create my presentation. And here we've got the presentation all ready. Of course, because it was generated in Canva, you can edit it in any way or form as you please. So if we just want to center that instead, you know, it's not gonna always get it right, but you can fix things. You can change the title, the text, the images that it found. Taking a look at one of the things to do in city, we've got visit the Opera House and Harbour Bridge. So it's generated the text and the description as well as the image in this nicely shaped form. Here's another. So there is some variation here. It's not just one different type of layout. We've got, you know, different shapes, different layouts. And if we do want to duplicate and add more tips and places to see, we can always just right click and duplicate the page and then add another. Now we've got a duplicate of page six, which we can now start editing and adding what we want. So this could be useful if you're creating, let's say a YouTube channel and you want to explain and share some tips on, you know, touring Australia, touring Sydney. And this could be very well a presentation you could present on your YouTube channel. But it literally just required one little sentence and description of what I wanted the presentation or topic to be about. And in an instant, Canva was able to produce this presentation. All right, and there you have it. Five useful websites to give a try today. And as always, let me know in the comments which of these you'll be giving a try, experimenting, and even using in your day to day. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, by all means, give this video a thumbs up. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.